Open our eyes and our hearts, Lord. Open our ears and our minds. Open us up. God, we want to see your face. We want to see your face this morning, this day, all of our days. God, reveal yourself to us. I invite you once again to speak through me and in spite of me. God, may my words somehow contain your message. In Jesus' name, amen. I like to imagine Jesus' face. Do you ever imagine Jesus' face? What his face might look like? I, I searched uh, Google for images of Jesus. N none of them uh, really did it for me. So this was as close as I could, as I could get. Jesus' face how it looks. I, I love uh, this picture hanging up in my room, in my office. It's of Laughing Christ. It's not Bob Marley, as somebody said. It's the, the Laughing Christ. I, I imagine Jesus this way. I, I'm greeted by this when I go to my office. And uh, thinking about Jesus' face, wow, that's, uh, I'm, I'm glad that that, that the pictures don't do it justice because I think for each of us, we come to Jesus and see Jesus a little differently and, and see Jesus' face in a different way. I've been thinking so much about faces since Ash Wednesday. I don't know if you're here, if you've ever experienced Ash Wednesday. It's a, it's a celebration of, of the beginning of Lent. And we mark this time in a very special way. I, I saw the congregation come forward and, and, I, and I took ashes from last, last Palm Sunday and, and, and marked the sign of the cross right there on, on the faces of the congregation. And so I've been thinking about faces and how expressive they are. They, they call it a facial expression. All of your faces, our faces are so expressive, aren't they? And they give us away sometimes. Unless you are very careful and have a poker face, uh, your face gives you away. And we, we even sing songs like this. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. That's right. Yeah, you know that song too. Your face will surely show it. And we, you know, we long, we long to see these expressions, don't we? That we long to see the expression of love on those that we love or the expression of, of, of approval or, or welcome or, or pride in the good kind of way. We long for these expressions. We, we see them, don't we? These expressions of, of care, these expressions of adoration. Our faces are so expressive. And the same is true uh, in the negative too, the, the, the expressions of disapproval or anger or fear, the expressions of, of something's wrong. And, and sometimes those that we love, the, those that we spend the most time around, we, we can tell their facial expressions uh, a little bit more than other people can. I, I'll walk into the room sometime with, with lots of stuff in my, in my mind didn't mean to change that. Lots of stuff on my mind. And my wife will say, honey, what's wrong? How does she know? My face gives it away. And I, I think of Jesus' face containing all of the expressions, all of the, all of the human expressions that we, that we have. He would have looked like a man from, from his time and culture. He would have carried on all these expressions, happy, sad, fearful, angry, all of the faces of, uh, of a human. But this morning, Luke really wants us to look at Jesus' face in the scripture this morning. It's, uh, it's something that he wants us to notice. He wants us to see this. The, the scripture is, when it came time for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face for Jerusalem. It is a face of, of resolve, isn't it? Resolve. I wish I had more of this sometimes. He's not distracted 
And I wonder if sometimes my face is distracted. But Jesus' face is not distracted and it's not, it's not anxious or fearful. It, it is the face of a man on a mission filled with great resolve. And scripture translates this, different translations translate this a little differently. We read this morning in NIV translation that he set his face resolutely towards Jerusalem. I, I love the message says that he, he gathered up his courage and steeled himself for the journey to Jerusalem. A face of, of steel, a face of resolve heading to Jerusalem. The actual Greek is, is this. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Steadfast, unstoppable, going almost, almost like this vision where, where, he, where he says no to, to everything else so that he can say yes to this mission ahead. And we see this time and time again. We, we know this look. What does it look like to be steadfast? Have, have, you ever been, have you ever been called to be steadfast for, uh, or to have resolve? What does that look like? Can I see your face when you, how's this look? How do you imagine Jesus looked on his way? I see it, it's a very familiar look. Nothing can stop this man from this mission on his way to Jerusalem. He is steadfast. And you see, he knows, doesn't he? And we get these hints that he knows. He keeps telling them what's going to happen. There's one time when he tells Peter what's going to happen. And Peter says, no, no, not, not you, Jesus. I, I, I won't let it happen. They won't, they won't get you that way, Jesus. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. He says that to his friend, Peter. He is determined, firmly decided that this is what he needs to do. And this marks a, a major shift in Jesus' ministry. Let's recap just a little bit. He, when he had this in his mind and he resolutely set out for Jerusalem, this is, this is new. Besides being in Egypt and, and being born in Bethlehem, Jesus' ministry happened uh, about about three days journey from Jerusalem. He was up in the north here. You can sort of see, he was right up here. He made his home in Capernaum by the sea. He was from this place right here, Nazareth, and then did most of his ministry right along here. All the healings, all the, the you know, the casting out demons, all the things that he said yes to out, out of his temptation, he, he did right around Capernaum. And so something shifted Luke dedicates over 10 chapters to his journey to Jerusalem. He is on a mission and, and he knows what will happen. And we do too, don't we? He said it like this, the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders the chief priests, the scribes, and be killed. And the third day, raised up. He knows what's going to happen. And we can see it on his face. He will teach, and he will heal, and he will slowly make his way to Jerusalem. He will, as the prophecy had said, he will ride in on a donkey and the people will have very, very excited and happy faces. And they'll wave these palm branches and they'll say, save us, save us. Hosanna, Hosanna. But then we know that the tide of public opinion will turn against him and the same, the same people that were excited faces their faces will turn to anger. And they will shout, crucify him. And his face will, will look the way 
a man's face would look when the tide of public opinion turns against him. And then we'll see on his face the way a man would look when, when his best friends betray him and desert him. And as we move into the season of, of Easter and the passion, that's, that's the thing that, that hurts me so much is seeing the look on his face when his, when his friends turn away. We will see his face. This, you know, Emmanuel, you ever think about it like this? God with us, God with a face, with a face. And we'll see that face spit on and beaten. We'll see that face cry out in pain and be lifted up on a cross. That face, the face of steadfast love from the cross saying, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Can you see his face? His face Will we know it when we see it? Will we recognize it when it's right in front of us? Or will we be like the the guys on the road to Emmaus who, who were in his presence, yet our faces were kept from, from knowing it, from seeing it? Have we seen the face of Jesus and just not known it? Will he need to reveal it to us? Maybe in the, in the breaking of bread, in the giving of the cup. Will he need to reveal it to us in the, in the serving of others? In the giving, the pouring out. As we resolve to set our lives on the path that he has shown us. Where will we see his face. And, and will it be so familiar when we see his face that we'll say, I have, I have known you my whole life. I know your face. I see your face. I've seen it before. This face of steadfast love, of unstoppable love, this face of death and resurrection. We see his face like we would see a, a friend inviting us closer, come closer. Inviting us to, to the table where all are welcome. His face 